Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the class on digital signal processing. Today uh, I will discuss about the sampling theorem and also the process of digital to analog conversion. Now sampling theorem says that suppose the signal's highest frequency is FM. Uh, it, it can be either a low pass signal or a band pass signal. Then a proper sampling requires a sampling frequency of Fs, which has to be at least satisfying this condition. That means the maximum frequency component in the signal should be less than half the sampling frequency, or it can be said that the sampling frequency should be twice the maximum uh, frequency component present in the signal. This number Fs by two is called the Nyquist frequency. And twice of maximum frequency component present in the signal is called the Nyquist rate. Now let's take an example. Consider an analog signal with frequencies between zero and three kilohertz. That means the maximum uh, frequency component present in the signal is three kilohertz. Therefore, a proper sampling requires at least six kilohertz of sampling frequency or higher. And if you do not choose a sampling frequency, either six kilohertz or more than six kilohertz, then it can lead to aliasing. Uh, the effect of uh, aliasing can be very disastrous. It can change the signal real frequency and even the signal real phase. We will talk about these uh, aspects also in, um, in future lectures also in multi-rate signal processing. Let's look once again this process of, let's say this is a continuous time signal uh, having this kind of shape. Then basically, uh, this is the sampled signal. How do you get the sampled signal? Uh, you just, mathematically speaking, you multiply the input signal with a train of impulses shifted by capital T. And then, you will get the x delta t, which is your uh, sampled signal. All right. So this is the mathematical explanation of uh, how do you get, how do you obtain the sampled signal from an analog signal? Okay. Now this this is this slide actually shows the sampling in the frequency domain, meaning by if you look at the analog spectrum, if you look at the spectrum of the analog signal, this omega minus, uh, capital omega minus pi by t or capital omega pi by t. Actually, pi by t in analog domain is corresponding to half the sampling frequency. Now, if this is the analog spectrum and you sample the signal and you obtain the digital spectrum, the digital spectrum will repeat. This is this small omega is the digital frequency. And this is the digital spectrum. Now minus pi by capital T in analog spectrum is actually equivalent to minus pi in digital spectrum. Pi by capital T in analog spectrum is actually equal to pi in the uh, digital spectrum. So the actually the digital spectrum will vary from minus pi to pi and further it will repeat with a period of 2 pi. All right. So this is the frequency response of an analog signal and the below curve is the frequency response of the sampled analog signal. That's what I have already explained. This capital omega is pi by capital T corresponds to omega which is the digital frequency equal to pi or f is equal to fs by 2. The digital spectrum is the same as the original analog spectrum, but repeats at multiples of the sampling frequency, fs. fs is basically equal to 2 pi, right? So corresponding to 2 pi. So after uh, periods of 2 pi, the spectrum will repeat. Now, this is what this slide actually explains the 
uh, aliasing process when the analog uh, spectrum is not band limited to minus pi by capital T to pi by capital T. That means it extends beyond minus pi by T on the negative side and beyond uh, pi by T on the positive side. That's what is said here with this explanation. Then what will happen? The, the, because the digital spectrum uh, frequency response of the sampled analog signal and the uh, the digital in the digital spectrum, the uh, spectra will repeat after a period of two pi, and it extends from. Now, if you see here, the baseband frequencies, there will be aliasing. Uh, let's see if the sim if the sampling frequency fs is not sufficiently high. The spectrum centered on fs. The spectrum centered on FS will fold over or alias into the baseband frequency. That means if this, uh, let's say this is 2 pi and this is 0, the spectrum is centered at uh, this frequency and this spectrum will interfere into the baseband frequencies. The, the repetitive spectra will interfere into the bit. And this frequency is actually the folding frequency. Folding frequency means where the aliasing will take place and the frequencies will fold over. And this point is also folding frequency, right? Where the aliasing will take place. But this will happen only when the uh, analog spectrum extends beyond uh, minus pi by capital T. Uh, in the negative side and pi by capital T on the positive side. So the aliasing will take place. That's why it is said here, here in this, if the signal is not, if the analog signal is not band limited, then the aliasing will uh, take place in the signal. Now, after you convert the signal from analog to digital conversion, whether you will be able to recover the original signal from the digital at the receiver side, right? If you are able to, the, whether you will be able to receive the actual anal analog signal from the digital signal or not, that's the question. So that is actually done by a digital to analog converter, that, uh, which is, which we can call it as the signal recovery. The D2A conversion process is employed to convert the digital signal into an analog form after it has been digitally processed. After it is, it has gone through the processing through the digital or DSP chip, whether the digital output of the DSP chip can be converted to an analog signal. So that's the question here. The reason for such conversion may be, for example, because ultimately you have to feed the signal to some device, whether it can be either a loudspeaker or to sound an alarm, and it will these devices will take analog signal as the out as the input. So you need to actually convert the digital signal into uh, analog signal. The D2A process is shown in Figure Nine, which is on the next slide. I'm coming to that. So this is the digital signal processor. The output of the DSP chip will be Y of N in digital form. It can be either 8 bits or 12 bits or 16 bits. This is the sampling uh, sampled version of the signal YN and capital T is the sampling period. Now this signal, this digital signal will be applied to a D2A converter. Actually the inputs to the D2A converter are series of impulses while the output of the DAC has a staircase shape due to the, uh, as each impulse is held for a capital T seconds. Because of the holding action in the D2A converter, the, the output of the D2A converter will be a staircase shape. Now this staircase voltage will be passed through a low pass filter, which is basically acting as a reconstruction filter or smoothing filter to recover the original analog signal back. We will see how uh, mathematically we can explain this whole process. 
the D2A converter show, shown in figure nine is referred to as a zero order hold, um, D2A, zero order hold um, D2A converter. Now by comparing its output Y cap T and its input Y N, it is evident that for each digital code fed into the D2A converter, its output is held for a time capital T. The result is the characteristic staircase shape of the D2A. I have already discussed it. The D2A output approximate, approximates the analog signal by a series of rectangular pulses whose height is equal to the corresponding value of the signal pulse. That's what these are. The height I'm talking about is the height of the um, height of this pulse. So these pulses will act from these pulses which is basically the output of the D2A converter. After passing it through the reconstruction filter, I will be able to get the original analog signal back. Now, let's try to uh, do the analysis and consider just one pulse. Out of these uh, staircase uh, voltage, staircase uh, uh, shape of the output voltage of the D2A converter, let's consider one pulse here. And this pulse will be defined as the impulse response of this pulse will be defined as um, one from zero to T and zero otherwise. All right, in the time domain. This is in the time domain. The pulse is in the, this, ex, this uh, uh, expression is in the time domain for one pulse. Now, if we look at the corresponding frequency response in the continuous domain, because this I'm talking, I'm taking here the um, big omega, which is basically in the uh, continuous domain only. And this is the formula, general formula of the frequency response of a signal. Right. If you, because the pulse ranges from the value of the pulse is one from zero to capital T. So that's why these, these limits are changed to zero to capital T. And uh, it is one in this range. So the expression reduces to the, if you solve this integral and do some manipulation by applying the Euler's formula, by taking this a of uh, e to the power minus j big omega capital T by two out, out of the bracket. So you will be uh, left with, you will be, you will be having this expression, which is basically equal to sine function. And this is the final output of the integral, right? This is, this expression is important. Sine of big omega capital T by two divided by sine of big omega, uh, big omega capital T by two. This is basically a sync function, right? Okay. Now this is the frequency response. If we take the magnitude response of this uh, expression, it will be only above the uh, above the x-axis only because we are taking the modulus here. Along the x-axis is big omega, that means the frequency, analog frequency. Along the y-axis is the magnitude response. And if we plot this magnitude response, we will be getting these type of pulses. Now this sine of x by x, x is basically uh, capital uh, this big omega into capital T by 2 divided by this big omega capital T by 2. So x is basically big omega capital T by 2. So therefore we get here sine x by x expression. All right. So this is the magnitude response of a rectangular pulse in the frequency domain. Now in the frequency domain, the staircase action of the DAC introduces a type of distortion. Now, if you look at the, now this is the digital spectrum, which is basic. This is the uh, digital spectrum uh, in the uh, discrete domain, because the small omega is the uh, digital frequency. And this is the frequency response. We know that the frequency response is exactly same from minus pi to pi as the analog spectrum, but it will repeat with a period of two pi beyond minus pi to pi. And once, now this is the D2A output, which is basically a sine x function. 
as because uh, the analysis that we are doing here is that we are taking one pulse we are taking the frequency magnetic uh, frequency response of this pulse and we we find that the frequency response of this pulse is actually sine it's a sync function it is about the x axis because we are taking the magnitude so magnitude response so therefore this sin x by x is actually the magnitude response of the uh, uh, it is the d2a output now this sin x by x is actually because there are multiple pulses if you see in this uh, in the output of the uh, in the output of the uh, d2a converter these are multiple pulses and every pulse will lead to a sync function type of uh, waveform in the frequency if we analyze the whole uh, output of the dac in frequency domain so that actually introduces an error we call that distortion as the sin x by x distortion or aperture distortion where x i have already explained it is equal to big omega uh, capital t by 2 all right now the amplitude of the output signal spectrum is multiplied by the sin x function which acts like a low pass filter with high frequencies heavily attenuated the sin x by x effect actually this effect is due to the holding action because that's why dac gets a shape or the dac output gets a shape of the staircase holding and while we are doing the recovery this will introduce an amplitude distortion now to mitigate the effect of for a zero order zero order hold from uh, d2a holding action the function sin by x sin, uh, sin x by x falls to about 4 db at half the sampling frequency giving an average error of about 36% uh, this is one example we can quote and this is known as sin x by x type of distortion is known as the amp amplitude distortion or aperture error now this aperture error can be eliminated by equalization in practice this can be achieved by first passing the signal before converting it to analog through a digital filter whose amplitude frequency response has a x by sin x shape so that it is just the reverse of this distortion the response of the filter is x by sin x the the process of digital to analog conversion will introduce a sin x by x distortion so the two are equalized so that's the uh, process of equalization to remove this aperture error now let's this is the aperture error but it actually depends on uh, what type of a to d converter you are looking for i mean that will depend on the uh, specifications or the application for which the dac is required but uh, that means whether you actually require this compensation or not uh, that is uh, uh, the choice of the designer but aperture error or amplitude distortion can be removed by having a pre filter with a response of x by sin x all right now if you look at the block diagram of uh, d2a converter uh, there is a low pass filter which we call as the reconstruction filter let's look at the reconstruction filter now how the uh, how the uh, how the signal can be uh, reconstruct that means how the analog signal can be recovered from the digital uh, input or to the dac now the output of the d2a converter contains unwanted high frequency at multiples of the sampling frequency as well as the desired frequency component that we have already seen because of the staircase voltage now the role of the output filter is to smooth out the steps in the d2a output thereby removing the unwanted high frequency components in general the requirements of the anti imaging filter are similar so the reconstruction filter is actually known as anti imaging filter we will we will discuss this uh, anti imaging filter and anti aliasing uh, when we will discuss multi rate signal processing in detail 
but at present this reconstruction filter is uh, will be called as the anti imaging filter all right so let's see how what is the how this filter can uh, smooth uh, smoothen out the uh, output voltage of the dac now if you look at the ideal d2a converter the output should be impulses rather than that staircase voltage now this is the ideal uh, this is the frequency response of the ideal low pass filter pulse uh, it is equal the it's a flat voltage from minus pi by e capital t to pi by e capital t and this is this type of uh, impulses are applied to the ideal low pass filter to recover the signal back now let's consider just one pulse just one impulse which is basically delta t function and pass it through the low pass filter right and if you take the fourier transform you will get that this uh, output or output will be this is the uh, fourier the, the transform in transform in the fourier domain uh, frequency domain and this uh, you once you take the inverse fourier transform you will get the you will get the signal back and that signal will have a sync function sync shape so ht is sin pi t by capital t right so the output will be like this this is actually the uh, the frequency response right it's not the time domain response it's the frequency response this is the time domain response now if we apply the y caps t to the input of the filter now y cap t and this ht is the impulse response of the filter these will be convolved and y capital y cap t we know that uh, y cap t is actually the convolution of the digital signal and the impulses so these two will be convolved all right now y y n this y n can be taken out of this expression and this delta t minus n by capital t will will be actually convolving with uh, with this sync function now one, we know that we know this property then when the signal is multiplied by a shifted uh, version of the pulses shifted pulses time shifted pulses you will get the signal the shifted signal actually so that's what the property we can apply here once you convolve the uh, shifted impulses with the fun with the function the function will itself get shifted so that's what is done here this sync function gets shifted um, with gaps of capital t and this will be yn uh, sync function shifted versions of the simple this response is for n equal to minus infinity to infinity that means there will be uh, there will be now the original signal can be obtained by adding together an infinite number of sin x by x pulses because uh, because n varies from minus infinity to infinity there will be infinite number of impulses uh, uh, sin x by x pulses in the frequency domain the nth sin x by x pulse is here is shifted through a distance uh, <coughs> n capital t with respect to the origin and multiplied by a factor yn that's what is actually given in this expression that you will have multiple uh, multiple sin x by x pulses shifted by uh, n capital t and then the signal will be multiplied by the this yn right now this recovery process is actually called interpolation we will see in the diagram that what this interpolation process is now this this if you see the if you see the curve corresponding to y of 0 this impulse corresponds to this sync function corresponds to um 
y0 right there will be multiples of sin x by x as i said earlier uh, sink functions now each discrete time sample is multiplied by a shifted sink function summing these sink functions will produce the original analog signal now if you can if you interpolate what what is interpolation actually you will get multiple sin x by x pulses or multiple sink functions now you join the tip of the um, tip of this these curves you will actually interpolate the signal uh, to uh, this envelope is actually the original analog signal and this process of reconstruction of the analog signal using the ideal uh, using the low pass filter using the reconstruction filter this process is known as interpolation the signal xt is reconstructed from the samples by summation of weighted and shifted sin x by x pulse right so this is the process of uh, digital to analog conversion using the uh, reconstruction filter and we also call it uh, this uh, as a sync filter or sync function reconstruction filter or smoothing filter with this i have uh, explained the process of how an analog signal can be converted to a digital uh, signal in my previous uh, lecture and in this lecture i have covered with how you can recover the original analog signal back from the digital signal using a d2a converter and passing the output of the d2a converter through a low pass filter which we call as the reconstruction filter thank you